Well, thank you, Surrender. It's good to be here, and uh, uh, thanks for that introduction. Uh, what a journey it has been in the last, uh, I guess it's been almost three years now since we had this concept uh, was presented to me, and I got a call from Jonica Davey and Diva and different ones, and we got on the Skype, and we put our heads together and came up with a plan and, and started uh, this project and we tossed out ideas and concepts and they changed and they grew. Um, but what a journey and much of what you said today, just now, applies uh, to what we're experiencing up at Laurelwood in regards to work and attunement especially because if there was ever a project that provided an opportunity to attune yourself with uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, this would be it. So. Sometimes in the course of uh, sculpting his image, I was making reference to a lot of photographs, um, uh, of course there was an inward guidance that was sometimes more present than others, but sometimes the attunement would become so profound that I would have to set down my instruments, tools, and uh, just go with that flow in that moment and be elevated into uh, a pure creative flow. So I tried to infuse those qualities into that piece. It just has taken over two years to do the little model that you saw there. So uh, there is the attunement side, the spiritual side, and uh, you already covered all of that and a lot of attitudes about work. But to give you an idea of the scale that we're talking about, if you look at the top of, say, just below the spiritual eye, maybe the yellow, the yellow rim, that's how tall it is, approximately, I think. I've got a photograph I'll show you later. But uh, the people that have come into the studio, and uh, uh, I, I like to stand behind the sculpture and watch their faces, you know? And uh, it's complete awe and joy. Some become so quiet and still. Others uh, say, wow, they didn't think it was that big. But eight feet, eight inches tall with the base. And it's going to be in cast bronze and placed on that hill there outside of the Laurelwood uh, campus there. Uh, the other thing is, besides all the spiritual uh, dimension, is the, te the technology. And I know we live in a technological age, and it has completely been uh, a part of this project. We, we took that sculpture to Form 3D Foundry here in the Portland area, and they, they used a relatively new technology, a powerful computer technology. They scanned it three-dimensionally, seamlessly into the computer. They can turn it around, they can do anything they want to do with it in there. And they use that data to uh, drive a large machine that cut foam blocks. Uh, and this little, this tool goes back and forth on the block. And it cuts the form from a 12 inch model to an eight foot model. So they use these foam blocks that are cut identically to the small statue. It's, it saved so much work and time and accuracy. It provided so much accuracy. But it's the exact same form. So uh, my job has been this last week to cover that form in foam with uh, oil-based clay and re-add some of the details that couldn't make it the jump into the foam. But there's one part of that process that was particularly interesting, and that is <clears throat> on the bust of Yogananda that's been around for a number of years, when I was working on it and I was learning, learning how to, to do sculpture and uh, years ago, and I remember, remember Swami Kriyananda came to Austin, Texas, where I was living, and uh, I took this wax a uh, portrait of Yogananda, which was relatively primitive at the time. And, uh, but I'd worked on it for a while, and I thought I was 
making some progress, but he looked at it, and he, he and his friends that were traveling with him, many of the Ananda, early Ananda group, um, made suggestions. They said, well, his smile's not big enough, you know. And Kriyananda said, well, there's a little bit of a crook of foolishness in his smile here. You need to maybe iron that out and, and uh, do this and do that. And I, and I thought that was really wonderful, but I didn't realize till later what a great blessing that was to have that. But we finished uh, the wax years ago, and I sent him a bronze copy of it, and that thing has been made copies and circulated around. But here's the story here as it applies to here. We took that portrait that he worked on, that he helped with, that he had his hand in, and we scanned that portrait uh, into the computer, the same computer that has that model in it, and they, they very accurately infused that face onto the face that's on that model. So it, it replaced the face that was there so that Kriyananda's influence would be in there. And plus it's a much better face because it was sculpted larger. So through the miracle of modern technology, we have Kriyananda's influence in the piece and it looks uh, much more like Yogananda and we've been adding some features and making some refinements. But by and large, um, the whole package is very powerful, and uh, people are just uh, astonished when they walk in there and see that. And, and I give it all, I give all the credit to, you know, where. So um, anyway, come by and see it. We need, um, we need your prayers. We need your spiritual support. We need financial support. And tonight, we are going to have a kirtan that surrounds the sculpture at 8 o'clock. Everyone's invited to come up there, and uh, we'll sing. We'll uh, uh, bless, the, bless the figure and the impact it has on the world. And I think we're going to try to broadcast that on Facebook at the same time, live, if you want to tune in. So there's opportunities there. Um,